Well, everyone, welcome to Talking Logistics, where we have conversations with thought leaders and newsmakers in the supply chain logistics industry. It's my great pleasure to welcome today's program, Winnie Barton, who is User Experience Manager at Megacorp uh, Logistics, and Kyla Ford, who is Chief Revenue Officer at Trucker Tools. And today we're going to talk about navigating changing times in the freight industry. So we all know that you know the freight market is cyclical, you know, and it's impacted by by many factors. So inflation and slowing economic growth are in the headlines, uh, you know, today. So how is the current state of the freight industry impacting logistics service providers and the carriers and shippers that they work with? And you know, what actions can they take to um, you know, mitigate the impact and su successfully navigate, you know, the, the, these changing times and how can technology help? Well, those are some of the questions we're going to kind of dive into in today's uh, episode. And it's great to have Winnie and, and Kyler on the program to share their insights and advice on this topic. So Winnie, Kyler, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Great to be here. Great. Well, Winnie, uh, you know, you're a first time guest here on, on, on Talking Logistics, and I'm sure some people might be familiar with, you know, Megacorp Logistics, some people may not be. So maybe before we dive into the topic, why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, Megacorp Logistics and, and your operations and, and your role there? Absolutely. Uh, Megacorp Logistics was established in 2009 um, by Ryan and Denise Legg. There are amazing founders um, we couldn't ask for better leadership with our company. Um, we currently have around 640 employees with five offices nationwide, with Wilmington, North Carolina being our headquarters. Um, we're currently uh, hauling over 5,000 loads weekly, um, servicing full truckload, LTL drayage, intermodal, you name it, we ship it in North America. Um, and uh, we had a really interesting year. Obviously, 2020 was a little crazy, but um, we transitioned our previous proprietary TMS system to a web-based proprietary TMS system. So it was a big change for us and we named it Hero. Um, and it really just opened the door for um, enhancing our digital load board and um, just new integration partners such as Trucker Tools and Smart Capacity. Um, and in 2021, we launched our relationship with Smart Capacity and Trucker Tools. So it was very exciting. Um, my user experience role um, I was a freight broker from 2016 to 2020, um, you know, and I had a lot of experience on the floor in the day-to-day -day kind of grind of being a broker. And I started working with our tech team as a business user for our proprietary TMS system. And now I represent our customers and our carriers and our business users at Megacorp um, when there's an integration opportunity or um, just any type of opportunity there is to discuss any type of our resources that we have at Megacorp. Yeah, it's a great background. I love the title, user user experience. I mean, that's something that um, you know has been getting a, growing attention um, over the past few years, right? So, particularly from the technology side of things, right? So, it was always about the features and functions, but a lot of times, um, you know, user experience was a second or third, you know, priority. But you know, making it easy, you know, enabling in your case, you know, shippers and carriers to easily access the technology, easily access the information that they're looking for, um, you know, it, it's key in this industry. And, uh, you know, having someone with that title within a logistics service provider, I think is uh, is key. And I don't think I've, I've come across someone that has that, that same exact title as you do. So that, that, that's awesome. Um, so, so let, let's, you know, let's start with a question um, that I think you might've answered differently you know, a few months ago or last year at that at this time, and that is, you know, how would you characterize the current state of the freight industry, and and how is it impacting, you know, Megacorp, and how is it impacting the the carriers and shippers that you work with? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, obviously, you know, during the pandemic era, there was a lot of uncertainty in the transportation industry. Um, you know, the ports were overwhelmed, supply chain was disrupted. Um, just so many obstacles, but despite the obstacles, surprisingly, you know, 2021 was a record year for a lot of carriers and a lot of brokerage companies. Um, and, you know, they obviously with that record growth purchased new equipment to be able to sustain those, um, those, those consumer needs. And, you know, fast forward to 2022, we're seeing market slowdowns, we're seeing volume down, um, the warehouses and inventory, um, the inventory is full over the last unit you know, in North America. And, you know, we saw in January, March, and May, 
that there was an increased amounts of MC authority revocations, just, you know, the high costs of running a truck now, right? You have um, equipment costs, repairs, the diesel prices, we see that on the news every single day, um, the diesel prices rising. And, you know, it's just been an extremely tough environment for our carrier partners. Um, so we're just super focused on helping our carriers with reloading opportunities, um, you know, less deadhead miles for pickup locations. Um, and Trucker Tools has just been such an amazing partner to help us do this with our carriers. Well, that's um, great. Yeah. No, you want to add something else? Um, no, you know, we're just seeing on like on a customer standpoint, too. Um, we're seeing a lot of customers and shippers um, implementing RFPs, um, you know, for the first time in a few years. Um, I had a, I was talking to one of our, our brokers on the floor and he was like, I haven't seen an RFP in three years. And I had one sent to me yesterday. So, you know, most of our customers are definitely focused on quarterly RFPs versus annual RFPs. Um, and, you know, just a nationwide industry push of good service we're seeing, um, you know, that's something that our customers and our shippers are focused on is cost savings. And, you know, they're just being a little bit more selective with their carrier partners. Yeah, no, I think you brought, you brought up a lot of great, uh, you know, points there and, and some key trends that, that are happening in the industry. You know, obviously from the carrier side, you know, their operating costs have been going up. Uh, obviously, you know, fuel being the thing that's in the, the headlines, but things like insurance and now with the slowing economy um, and, and, and and the like, you know, trying to make, uh, you know, trying to, try to make ends meet, you know, has become, you know, more difficult, particularly for the smaller owner operators, uh, you know, is, is what I'm seeing. And then on the shipper side, you're right. I mean, I work with a lot of shippers and, you know, they're looking at, um, you know, moving to a more, um, you know, smaller bids, uh, more continuous bids, you know, in terms of being able to respond effectively to, uh, you, you know, to the, the ebbs and flow of, of the market. Uh, Kyler, uh, you know, kind of shifting over to you a little bit. I mean, what are you hearing from kind of the other logistics service providers and, and the carriers that you work with? I mean, are, are there objectives and priorities changing? Yeah, I think it definitely has uh, since last year and, and the folks and the partners that we work with on the logistics side, uh, like Megacorp being a great one, uh, they're really focused on, on that carrier experience because you know having those reuse, having those value carriers at their disposal, obviously are what helps them win those RFPs and, and provide consistent quality service, right? That differentiates them from, from others in the industry. Uh, so we, we continue to see them reinvesting in, in technologies like Hero, for example, at their proprietary TMS, and whether it's a, a in-house built TMS that they they own and love, or or maybe someone else that they're buying and, and partnering with. In that case, those folks are at the forefront of making sure that all those systems end up feeding back just this great service platform, both for the carrier experience uh, as well as just their internal efficiencies. I think. You know, when we talked to people last year, they were just focused on growth and hiring, hiring, hiring. And I think now more so than anything, they're focused on processes and, and systems internally that just make all of those things more efficient. And maybe they pull back on the hiring just a little bit and make sure that the folks that they do have are just really empowered to do a great job. Right. And then on the flip side, you know, being at Trucker Tools, we, we service 3PLs and, and brokerages of all sizes, but we also have this mobile app and this, this appeal to the drivers. So we're making sure that we're um, putting together all of the best tools on that app for the drivers, whether it's fuel prices, an indication for where they should be stopping, insurance partner opportunities, factory partner opportunities, whatever it may be, we want it at their disposal. So when they do track uh, one of our shipments through Megacorp or elsewhere, they book a load on smart capacity, these other pieces that are impacting them are all there at their disposal as well. So they're not having to go look and find them. So we're just making sure that, you know, when we're talking to our partners, that anything that they feel like is a value to them in this kind of ebb and flow, difficult stretch of the market, we're helping to solidify as much as possible, right? Like uh, they're obviously going to feel some impacts, but we, we've done a good job with our user experience team, feedback from folks like Winnie uh, to make sure that everything we are giving them is useful and providing that return on investment, which is what everyone wants. So um, yeah, again, I think what's what's neat about it, Trucker Tools is that we work with so many different types of brokerages, uh, you know, folks that specialize in flatbed, uh, the typical kind of stuff. Megacorp does a little bit of everything uh, and then smaller all the way up to, you know, the biggest of the big. So we see it in different, the pain points kind of occurring at different times at different places with each of them. Um, but the ones that are forward thinking, the ones that have kind of thought in a longer term vision, 
generally don't seem to feel the the pressure or or the pain as much as as others. So um, yeah, we just continue to provide uh, kind of real time feedback and improvements to our system to help them deal with those. You know, it's interesting how you you know if we were talking a year ago and, and certainly during the, uh, you know, the, the, the boom, if you will, I mean, a lot of the focus, like you said, you know, was, Hey, how can we scale our operations profitably? Right. So without having to hire an army of people, but our growth is, you know, going through the roof. Uh, so we, how can we, you know, change our processes and implement technology to enable that, to you know, uh, enable that hyper growth. And then, you know, in, in times like these, I think both of you kind of reflected on this a little bit. It's, you know, the focus is more about, you know, process efficiency. You know, it's more about re customer retention or carrier experience, you know, th those things. And, and you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, technology plays, you know, a, a key role in, in fulfilling both those types of, of uh, uh, priorities or, or, or objectives, uh, which, which brings me back to you, uh, you know, Winnie. I mean, kind of in response to, you know, these ever-changing market conditions, everything that both you and, and Kyler, you know, just talked about. I mean, what, what actions have you taken to, you know, support your carrier partners and how can technology help? Yeah, I mean, as we know, like, you know, carriers are the backbone of our industry. Without them, you know, we wouldn't be able to service our clients. And I always go back to Prasad's meaning of the word CRM. I love how he uses that as the carrier relationship management tool. Um, you know, because typically we've always historically heard that as like the customer relationship management. So um, again, carriers are our are, are partners. We value them tremendously. Um, you know, a couple of things that we're, we're definitely doing for our carriers is, you know, essentially just providing different opportunities for them to be able, um, you know, to send their documents to us a little bit sooner so that they can get paid sooner. Um, you know, having um, just all of these different resources, whether it be communicating with us through smart capacity, um, you, you know, these loads that we're posting through smart capacity through digital freight matching aren't on the external large platforms yet. You know, they're getting first access to our loads real time as they're being built in our system as a smart capacity vendor. So um, we're just trying everything we can to give them good access to all of our um, load availabilities and obviously ensure that um, you know, they have access to give us their documents as well for prompt payment because we really understand that, you know, obviously it's a high cost for running a truck right now. We want to get them paid as soon as possible um, so that they can keep moving and keep running their truck. Yeah, I mean, those are great points. I mean, I think, you know, um, when you talk about smart capacity, um, you know, carriers worry about two things or well, they worry about a lot of things but one what, what of the things they worry about is obviously when, when am I going to get my next load or how do I keep my trucks moving because that's what that's how they're making money is keeping their trucks moving so I mean any ways that technology can help that is, is key but the other thing is you know just cash flow right yeah. and you know getting getting paid fast and getting paid on time is critical as, as you mentioned so I think you know the ability to you know simplify you know get get away from these paper-based uh, right. types of uh, transactions to be able to expedite that payment is is key for them. You know, any any days uh, that you can pull in the payment, um, you know, I think it's, it helps these these carriers, uh, you know, immensely. So, so uh, you know, Kyler, go, going over to you, I mean, um, kind of to just build upon that. I mean, are there any, are there certain technology capabilities that are more important today in, in light of the, you know, the current market conditions that, you know, carriers, brokers, you know, ought to be thinking about or prioritizing? Yeah, well, she, when he hit it on it, you know, nail on the head with the carrier relationship management in the sense that it, it really, in the way we look at it, in my mind, it, it's not just one thing, right? Just like your CRM and Salesforce has a lot of components to it that make it successful or not, right? We can all buy one off the shelf and whether or not we use certain features and functionality is probably what makes one of us better than the other at it, right? And the same thing is with, with the CRM that we talk about is making sure that all these tools kind of are available and they work together to feed this user experience that just is nice, right? Like we like to do business with things in life that are seamless and kind of very lightweight, but we have this great feeling whether or not it's instantaneous, whether it's just like a good customer service interaction, right? All those things need to play together with each other. Uh, so technologies that help that, as Winnie alluded to, is the ability to upload documents in real time. So that's been around now in the industry for some time, but I think carrier adoption of it is always generally slow and just the sense of how they're used to doing things. So I think 
in this type of environment, drivers and, and carriers start to utilize those more when they realize that they're at their disposal. Uh, and whether that's through our app or whether that's through another integration or partnership, they're, they're starting to use those more. Uh, on terms of smart capacity or on the digital front, they're seeing availability to, to book loads easier and faster that are, are preferential to the, their lanes that they like to run, right? And we call that dibs and, and, and the ability for them to have access to the sooner is easier, right? It doesn't take as long to find, it's the transactions easier. And we've also enabled the bill availability to go back and forth in terms of the bidding process. So, you know, just like if you're booking a hotel on Priceline and you have like an idea of what you want to buy, you know, you can go in there and put those parameters and you end up getting one spit back out for you. And the same is with these loads. And where that helps Winnie and her team is that they don't have to be monitoring it in real time every second. But these folks, when they get done with their load, they can go in, see what's available, book, make an offer. And it's back and forth so seamlessly uh, that they really enjoy the experience. Right. Uh, and then the other component of it, too, with technologies is just even on the back end, more like Winnie's side and their team side is just the availability for these open API integrations and, and people like ourselves and Trekker Tools willing to play nice with other partners in the industry. You know, historically, everything's been very siloed and you have to buy a lot of separate systems and they don't talk well with each other. And all that really does is cause a lot of pain on all sides. Um, there's no real win in, in that experience. So now that I think a lot of folks like Trekker Tools are, are willing to share data and integrate with each other and make the flow very seamless, it actually comes back and benefits the carrier a lot uh, because the communication is a lot shorter. It's more shortened to them. Um, they see it kind of more widespread across the organization and the stress doesn't exist kind of within the, you know, the day-to-day -day operation. So there's a lot of great technologies being spun up. Some are being consolidated, which is also probably a good thing too. Um, but I think uh, we see it on a day-to-day -day basis that the folks like Megacorp, uh, and others that are leading the way that have you know, 600 plus people uh, on their companies are just constantly pushing the envelope in terms of the things that they're able to do uh, from a technology front, whether that's a TMS, whether that's uh, the digital freight booking offering that we provide and, and the feature functionality that we have and want to build in our product roadmap, whatever the case may be, those folks are, are, are the ones that are able to see these care regions just increase over time because they're just providing the seamless experience. So thanks for bringing Winnie CRM up because we, we like to talk about it. And it's, it's something that's thrown around a lot in our industry, but I don't think it's always defined uh, and laid out. I think people think it's like a one brush stroke thing, but it really is, is compiled with a lot of other strategies that you guys are working on. So we love it. Yeah, no, I, I love it too. And I, I think when we've had Prasad in the program in the past, he's brought that up. And I think the first time he brought it up, I'm like, gosh, darn it. I, I should have thought of that. That's, a, <laughs> that's you know, <laughs> so I'm going to steal that. I'm going to borrow that from now on. Uh, Cause I think it is a great, uh, it is a great point. And Kyle, you bring, you bring up a great point. I think, you know, so w in terms of the, you know, the, you know, the ecosystem of technologies that are out there and the need for these, uh, all these technologies to work together as seamlessly as possible. You know, so Winnie, obviously you, you guys invested to enhance your own internal TMS system, you know, moving it to, you know, a web-based uh, or a, a cloud-based solution. Um, but as you were looking, you know, obviously you focused on the areas that you wanted to invest in internally that made the most sense for you. But then you looked at to partners like Trucker Tools, you know, to bring in the capabilities and the functionality that they bring to the table. But obviously, you know, in today's age, you know, having that API uh, in integration capability or making sure that, you know, the systems play nice with each other and seamlessly with each other must, you know, must have been a priority as well, right? Absolutely. Um, it, it's super important that anytime we integrate with a partner that it works well for not only our, our, our employees or our business users that are using our hero system, but, you know, we also offer our clients um, a, a customer platform called Hero Connect to where, you know, they can view real time uh, appointment information, um, visibility, they have full transparency of what's happening with their loads. And these integration tools actually integrate with our customer platforms, as well as our carrier platform that we have on the flip side, which is called MegaWeb. So again, anytime we're integrating with anyone, we really have to consider, you know, all of the different types of softwares that we have as a company, and if they make sense for all of them, because, um, you know, Hero Connect actually um, is connected with trucker tools. So they have real time tracking capabilities if they wanted to log on to their portal and view load information. So yeah, it's super important when choosing a vendor partner or you know any type of integration partner that you're looking at all different types of resources as it's going to affect within the company. 
Yeah, well, not only, yeah, I think the, the point you just put up, I think it's great too, because it's not only within, you, the users are not, long, not only Megacorp employees, right. it's also your carriers and your customers, right? So you have to, you know, take them into consideration as part of the whole user experience of the technology Absolutely. that you bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, it's important to know what our real users are experiencing, right? You know, as, as tech, you know, as tech, you know, employees, we can, you know, assume that this is how they would use a product or this is how they would use a functionality. But the people that are doing this job every day are the ones that are teaching us things about how, you know, they're evaluating certain situations or handling certain situations with software. So um, we owe it to really the people, the customers, the carriers and our megacorp employees for giving us, you know, insight on what they do every single day to make our software um, definitely, you know, more enhanced and more efficient for them. Great, great. So as a way to wrap up and, and uh, you know, Winnie, I'll start with you and then Kyla, you can, you can add uh, your perspective as well. I mean, you know, now we're heading into the second half of, of 2022 and uh, the holiday season, of course. So what actions should, you know, logistics service providers take to successfully navigate, you know, these changing times in the freight industry and meet the needs of, you know, your carrier uh, partners and, and uh, you know, customers as well? You know, I can't say it enough, service, service, it really boils down to um, relationships. You know, they're the key to transportation as far as for our customers and our carriers. Um, for customers, it's more or less providing consistent pricing um, that are in alignment with the market rates. You know, do your research, stay up to date with market trends, you know, look at the LinkedIn articles, you know, research daily, weekly, the market can flip in an hour, you know, having that knowledge for your clients as well as your, your carriers is super beneficial. Um, you know, also to providing your clients and carriers with information as a company on your tech resources. You know, a lot of times you know, your customers don't know if you have a new report out that could help them be a more efficient or you have a carrier platform that could help the carrier see their payments real time. So just being, just communicating with them all of the different technology resources that you have as a company is just super beneficial as far as um, efficiency. Um, and again, just always on my end, I'm always continuing to research new transportation tech platforms and integration opportunities. There are so many cool things out there these days. Um, we uh, recently partnered with Text Locate that gives us the ability to um, text drivers on a platform. And it, it was awesome. It, it was just really a cool opportunity. So like smart capacity, like trucker tools, like text locate, like all these other integration partners, there are really cool opportunities to be found out there. You know, so I, I heard, you know, stay informed of market conditions, yeah. stay informed of what's happening in the technology landscape, because, you know, you, you want to continuously innovate and continuously add, you know, Absolutely. capability and communicate effectively with, you know, customers, carriers and, 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 and the like. You know, and ultimately, all if you do all those things together, you're going to be able to compete effectively on, on not only on the cost front, you know, from an op, you know, from a process efficiency standpoint and, and the like, but also from a uh, customer experience, a user experience, you know, standpoint as well. Kyler, uh, you, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I think she nailed it. Uh, I think customer experience and, and just the service level, and I think how you do that is through visibility and transparency. Um, and, and visibility from the sense of, you know, obviously, you know, we provide a visibility platform in the sense of you can see where loads are at any given time. But the, the great part about that is utilizing it to, to your advantage when, when something is off track or, or not going as well, like utilize that to get out ahead of it and provide the customer with this experience that they feel like, wow, these guys, they care about me. Even if something does go wrong, they're, they're proactive. They're utilizing tools that they have at their disposal. Uh, to let me know the changes so then I can make the changes I need to, right? So giving people and empowering them um, with the information so they can do something with it, right? So that's the visibility. And the transparency is just like she said, keeping an eye on the market and, and seeing how it's changing and, and being flexible, uh, you know, as a company. And, and we try to do that a lot, but like if we're working with Hero or a different proprietary TMS or even another TMS that's off the shelf, our ability to work with customers and, and integrate in a way that benefits how they've set things up is really our key to success. So flexibility, uh, whether or not you're dealing with a customer or whether we're dealing with as a tech partner is really key as things are changing quickly uh, because we want to be able to say, oh, this is something we can do in two weeks and not two, three months because by then 
the pain point may not even exist anymore or may be too late, right? As they're bidding on these RFPs, there might be additional qualifications. There might be other partnerships that are involved and through ELD integrations or whatever the case may be, right? Um, and things or requirements they have to do. And we want to meet as the vendor partner say, hey, we can take care of those for you. So I think Megacorp is, is doing a lot of these things uh, as, as the market has changed. But, you know, the the reality is it's it's almost the end of the year uh, and I know we're sitting in July, but it doesn't take long before we get to the holiday season and things just start already kind of winding down heading into the next year, right? So people are budgeting now for, for those projects for next year. Um, they're seeing what they can get done in those six, five, six months they have left, right? So what I tell people a lot is just start working backwards a little bit, right? In, in terms of their project plans and deliverables that they wanna get done for the year and see, make sure there's enough time to do it. And if not, prioritization is super key. We have to deal with it as a technology company, right? We can't do everything uh, out there, but we have to make sure we, we do the things that have the biggest impact on our customers and, and the industry. So have them do the same kind of self analysis, right? And things that they want to accomplish by the end of the year. And also, you know, when we meet with folks, I think Prasad talks about this all the time. We talk about their digital strategy. And that, that's pretty complex if you think about it, because there's a lot of stakeholders there. You know, Winnie and her team, I'm sure there's, you know, the head of IT there as well, CTOs, there's, there's people on the operations side that have their priorities, right? So making sure you're having that meeting and coming together uh, in the second half of the year to say, hey guys, are we all in the line of kind of what we want to do in the upcoming year? And know that it, they all take time, they all take uh, resources away from other things, right? And they also obviously have a cost associated with them. So just making sure you're having those collective communicate, communication meetings so that way when you get to, you know, the fourth quarter and or the, you know, prep to Q1 of 2023, everyone's on the same page. And it's easy to meet with folks like Checker Tools and others uh, to clearly say, hey, this is when we want to act on this. This is what our plan is here. Uh, and then we can all work really well together that way. It's a really successful uh, method, I feel like, for the folks that have done it and I've seen it in action. Uh, it's just really successful versus kind of the, the react uh, approach that kind of happens, happenstance, right? So anyways, uh, I think, you know, it's going to be exciting second half of this year, 2022. And uh, who knows what, what the kickoff of 2023 will be like, but uh, I'm, I'm super excited for it. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think, you know, we've learned to expect the unexpected in, in, in this industry. And uh, I think both of you brought up some great, you know, words of advice, some great insights, um, you know, and, and you know, we could probably end up speaking for another hour, you know, <laughs> and and still not be done with this topic. But uh, it, it just gives us an excuse to maybe bring you back on the program, you know, down the road to, to see where we're at. But again, I want to thank both of you for making the time to, you know, to be with us today. Uh, you know, Winnie, thank you. Kyler, thank you both for, for being on the program. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, if you're watching this episode on demand uh, and you've got a question for Winnie or uh, Kyler, you can post it uh, either at the Trucker Tools website or on, on Talking Logistics. And I'm sure that uh, they'll be both happy to respond via that medium. Again, thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Talking Logistics. Have a great day.